We, the champions of men's human rights, are faced with a stubborn dilemma. You see, we know that feminism is an ideology of hate, but that knowledge is only available to those few who have taken the red pill. There are still many blue pillars out there who think that feminism is about equality and fairness, because they refuse to see the truth that feminism is an ideology of hate. We know that feminism is hate, but sometimes it's hard to find the evidence that a blue pillar can really swallow. They want to see that smoking gun. And this is the smoking gun that they want to see. Some people will say, she's smoking all right, but she's not so scary, not so fast. A wise man once posed the question, does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Arkansas set off a tornado in Texas? Indeed it can. We witness the same pattern over and over again throughout history, but we never learn. It starts as a beautiful and harmless looking butterfly, but then it flaps its wings, diverting the airflow ever so slightly, which sets off a domino effect leading to the perfect storm, which unleashes a devastating tornado, killing thousands of innocent people. Now what if we could go back in time and find that butterfly and trap it before it can do untold damage? Would you act, or just let it flap away as it pleases? Feminists flap on about a lot of hateful things, but they are right about one thing. Even the most ruthless serial rapist once started out as an innocent-looking human male child. Those of us who live in the present have an obligation to protect the future from genocidal maniacs like this piece of subhuman scum by any means necessary. But before we rush to act, we must research so that we can understand the diabolical evil that we are dealing with. Exhibit A. Personally, I don't support the circumcision of anyone. It's really more of a traditional and cosmetic procedure, you know, all that Christianity stuff. I'm sure a lot of people prefer the aesthetics of a man who has been circumcised, but it's really something that isn't beneficial enough to be useful, in my opinion, anyway. So, she is against male genital mutilation. Well, there are also anti-Semites who are against circumcision, because they use it as an excuse to accuse all Jews of evil practices. And do you know who else was an anti-Semite? That's right. Adolf Hitler was. Exhibit B. Um, well, basically, I don't support abusing or humiliating children, female or male. Studies have shown that boys who are abused, especially by women, at a young age, mentally, physically, or emotionally, often grow up to have issues, obviously. Um, they might grow up to be abusers, or just unbalanced and disturbed in general. That's a human thing. The abused become abusers. I mean, logic. If you do have a male child, you should teach them that all avenues are open to them. Whether those avenues are stereotyped as feminine or masculine, do your best to nurture them and teach them to be kind in general. How can she be so sure that abused children become abusers? She must have had a personal experience to be so sure about that. That tells you that she is one messed up girl. Exhibit C. My mom would have these guys. She had a boyfriend when I was like two, and now I was three, my brother was two, and she had this boyfriend. And she had left my dad. She called the cops one day, randomly on my dad, and said that he beat her. And it turned out that he really never did. My mom is a drama queen. Anyway, she called the cops on my dad and said that he beat her. She, she literally beat herself. And got my dad sent off. And she left him while he was in jail for beating her. Uh, pretty cool, huh? Hold on. This girl just said that a woman would lie about domestic violence just so that she can get an advantage in family court. We already know that that is not possible because women can't lie. That tells us that Krista must be lying. Oh, by the way, this is typical behavior for a dangerous sociopath. Exhibit D. My mom is one of those people that likes to, uh, if you're not fighting, she thinks that you don't care. So she'll pick a fight, pick a fight, pick a fight, pick a fight, until this guy beats her. Who wants to live like that? No one. I loved my dad, and he wanted to be around me. I wasn't allowed to see my dad, because my mom, she left him, but she didn't want him to be with anyone else. And so she would use us and be like, if you get anyone, then you can't see, my, uh, see our children. And so my dad was just alone forever. He loved us. I mean, my mom loved us, but she didn't show up very well. My mom was just, she would really try to sleep with my boyfriends, and it was no okay. pain. Anyway, I loved my dad, and um, he was pretty cool. But I remember uh, when I was 15, uh, he, like six months, see, my birth, or his birthday is the day before mine. But 12 days after my 15th birthday is when he passed away. Uh, he had moved to uh, Memphis just like six months before that. Because, I mean, 
and my mom put him through hell our whole lives, and uh, he became an alcoholic. But I mean, whenever me and my brother were around, he didn't, didn't touch it. But if we weren't around, he was so depressed. He always, always checking it. Notice how the narcissistic sociopath feels no guilt whatsoever when they lie. Fathers can't love their children. Children can't love their fathers. Mothers can't cause family problems. Mothers can't exploit their own children. Everything that she's saying here is a lie, and she lies with no hint of shame or guilt. This is creepy as hell. I'm sorry that I have to show you this, but remember, this is all for the greater good. Exhibit E. However, when it comes to rape, many people contend that the solution in the West is to set forth campaigns about teaching men and boys not to rape, or that they can stop rape. It is one of the only crimes that we make this sex-related distinction for, and I feel that this is the wrong way to approach handling the problem. My opinion is that going about it in this way only makes men more resentful of not only feminism, but perhaps even, on occasion, women in society as well. Condemning and targeting entire demographics like that often leads to a negative backlash and some type of bitterness or feelings of indignation. They feel that they are being shamed or attacked or targeted unfairly. We need to stop placing the guilt of rape solely on men when we go about teaching people that rape is wrong. We need to seek to inculcate in all people, female and male, black and white, all human beings, the idea that they should respect the personal space of others. We need to teach everyone to not take advantage of others. We need to instill in everyone, female and male, an understanding that rape is wrong and that they should not harm or violate others. The only thing that we will accomplish by targeting men on rape is making them more grieved and resentful, specifically of feminism, and the proof of this sort of antipathy towards the notion of teaching men not to rape can be seen in many places. We just have to stop doing it. We have to go about condemning it and teaching that it is wrong in the same way that we do most every other crime. We should not make it the exception or make any sex-related distinctions in regards to the crime of rape. Now, I'm a staunch supporter of free speech, but what Krista is saying here has clearly crossed the line into hate speech. She actually said that rape should not be treated as a gender issue. But all the experts agree that rape is a gender issue, and all experts agree that all dissent from this is hate speech. I do think that Krista should have the right to say something this extreme, but I still think that somebody should hold her accountable for this act of hatred and bigotry so that she will be afraid to speak her mind freely in the future. Exhibit F. If you're a woman who lives in the West, as I do, you're not oppressed. You may face indirect dangers each day, as all people do, and you may occasionally find yourself discriminated against in a social setting, or you may find yourself offended by some sort of proposal, or by some sort of advertisement or form of media, such as a movie or a video game. But these things, in and of themselves, are not oppression. Oppression is defined as prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. None of these things are the things that women in the West, on an average and daily basis, will face. Commercials, video games, and an asshole on the street who whistles at you do not control you. These things only have power over you if you allow them to have power over you. This falls into the category of hypersensitivity. If you are an adult and you do not let these things affect you, you will find that you will have a far happier and more productive life. Here, she denies that women are oppressed. This is the kind of callous attitude that only a hardened sociopath could possess. She has no sensitivity or compassion for human suffering. She outright denies human suffering. This woman is sick. Exhibit G. All I can do here is offer a little bit of friendly advice for the dames. On YouTube, when you flag the videos of others, especially videos of dissent, you will be seen as a coward. No matter how you try to justify your actions, unless people are giving out your personal information, like your real names, locations, phone numbers, whatever, people are not going to side with you. And quite frankly, I myself do not approve of the sort of flagging that you're doing. You will not win this fight. And the more that you flag and try to silence dissent, the more popular and widespread the dissenting videos will become. If you hadn't noticed already, Snake's videos, which had previously been seen by just a few thousand people, have now been seen by many more thousands of people, and has gained quite a few subscribers from this whole ordeal. It does not look good on you, and it only validates the notion that feminists cannot handle criticism. It only reinforces the idea that feminists are cowardly, self-victimizing silencers. You could have gone the other way and allowed videos to remain, and perhaps even responded to a few of the dissenting videos with your own counterpoint to show that you truly believe in what you were saying. But you didn't, and now your flagging has backfired, and once again, we're left with the same stereotype that feminists still go out of their way to snuff out opposing points of view because they cannot handle being critiqued. So you can either continue to waste your time flagging and running the risk of losing your own channel while more and more people make and mirror videos against you, or you can stop flagging and actually respond and show that you feel that your points are valid and justified. Either way, I don't really care, but you're doing your enemies a favor here, and you're only damning and discrediting yourself. It's an unnecessary conflict that you will not win. Here she is giving helpful advice to those pesky dames who are known supporters of flagging and censorship on YouTube. Anyone who supports people who support censorship is supporting censorship by extension. And only fascists or sociopaths support censorship. So this tells us a lot about this woman. Exhibit H. Misogyny affects over 3 billion out of 3 billion 300 million women every day. I was once harassed in an elevator that I rode in. It came right up to my personal space and asked me out for coffee and I said, Look here, buddy! How would you feel if you were sexualized in the elevator? 
It's such a misogynist, he asked me again. I don't like it when women get harassed. It makes me feel bad because I'm a sensitive woman. And I'm, I'm doing my videos for a good reason. I'm protecting women from misogyny. And I'm doing my job. So the next time you see a woman getting hit on by a man, I want you to get right up in that man's face and go, look here, buddy. You better stop objectifying her. And I guarantee it'll work. Her figure about how many women are affected by misogyny every day was inaccurate, which again proves that she's either a liar or just really, really stupid. But in light of the other evidence presented so far, we must obviously conclude that she's a liar. Also, notice how she claimed to have been objectified in an elevator with coffee. That's exactly the kind of misandry that we've seen before from the likes of Rebecca Watson, who is a known sociopath. Exhibit I. So, so, um, today I'm going to be helping you guys out by providing you with a list of what not to do if you, um, don't want to be a sexual harasser or rapist. So, if a man ever does any of these things, then he is guilty of sexual harassment and probably rape. Okay, so let's begin. If you're a male, you may be guilty of sexual harassment or rape if you have been, number one, ogling a woman for any measure of time. Number two, whistling at a woman. Number three, discussing one's partner's sexual inadequacies with or in the presence of a woman. Number four, sexual innuendos towards or near a woman. Number five, commenting about women's bodies, even generally. Number six, accidentally brushing sexual parts of a woman's body. Number seven, sending a woman lewd and or threatening letters or messages. Number 19, putting down women in a hostile manner. You guys on my channel do all of this stuff to me. You're horrible. Number 20, exaggerated and mocking courtesy to or near a woman. Number 26, making, hooting, sucking, lip smacking, and or animal noises towards or in the presence of a woman. I just don't know why guys like bark at women. That's just kind of awkward for the guy. Number 27, pressing or rubbing up against a female victim. <clears throat> Number 28, sexual assault against a woman. If you've done any of these things, you should probably be in prison because you're either a creep or a rapist and you disgust me. What this little she-Hitler is effectively saying is that all men are rapists and creeps and that she finds men disgusting. Wow. Isn't that just sickening? Nauseating even? We owe it to men and boys everywhere to put information about this enemy of men and boys up on registerafemaleoffender.com because she is clearly a potential child murderer. But it gets much worse. Exhibit J. Stone's channel, the one you're viewing now, has been commandeered by us for the purpose of disseminating the tendrils of truth to all corners of the net. There will be no escape. There will be no resistance. So subscribe to the channel now, and we may just show you mercy. Have a wonderful day. As you can see, she has already begun to amass her internet legion. And this is really sad because this guy Stone, he used to be a bona fide MHRA. He used to care about men and boys, but now she controls him with her neoteny powers. We have lost him and his channel to the enemy. Now we can no longer deny that we are at war. This really is a matter of life and death. And there's more. Exhibit K. Was he standing outside of the school waving a gun around and proclaiming his plans for mass murder? No. Did they find that he had been mapping out plans for terroristic killing sprees in his home anywhere? No. Did they find that he was in possession of any sort of weaponry? Did they find that he had been constructing or hoarding any sort of dangerous weapons? No. Justin Carter is guilty of making an arguably offensive, possibly inappropriate and vaguely referential comment, with no substantiated evidence found to reinforce the idea that it was anything more than just a poorly timed and debatably tasteless joke that was of no real or immediate threat to the general public or anyone else at all, given that it was not seemingly directed at anyone. And yet they still treated him as if he were guilty of being in possession of weapons, or as if he had been converging and machinating with others to plot some sort of terroristic act, or as if he had been literally mapping out plans to commit a terroristic act. They arrested him without engaging in any sort of sensible evaluation of the circumstances or context. No reasonably defined probable cause, not even a hint of critical thinking or proper analysis of the claims, and evidence in relation to the law. Nothing. Their investigation essentially unearthed nothing substantial, nothing that would permit that they detain him for approximately five months, five months in which he underwent psychological and physical suffering and distress, was placed in solitary confinement, put on suicide watch because he'd almost lost all hope for his life. This is a miscarriage of justice, in the sense that it wasn't directly or even immediately harmful to society in a way that can be authenticated, or in a way that would warrant his arrest with so harsh a duration of confinement and such severe treatment. It's not like a murder or theft or even someone plotting out terroristic acts 
and being in possession of dangerous weapons in a way that is actually tangible with real, meaningful, and authenticated evidence that makes the arrest reasonable and the confinement and treatment arguably valid and lawful. No, it's about policing thoughts, misguided policies, and overextending the boundaries of what is fair, reasonable, rational, and useful to society. This isn't just about freedom of speech or the right to say whatever you want. It's about a vaguely defined war on terror that has far exceeded its capacity to do things which make any sort of sense based on the purpose of our written laws. Are we combating thoughts? Are we combating speech? Are we combating certain phrases? If someone mentions shooting up schools or bombing, does that now automatically warrant the same treatment that we would give someone who actually commits these acts of enactment? Are we combating a certain sort of feeling? Fear? Terror? Are we combating certain individuals, cells, organizations, ideologies? No one has ever really coherently defined what we are struggling against. When we inquire, we receive vague interpretations, mixed clarifications, various, conflicting, unusual and useless information. Nothing that can make us feel any more secure than we already were, but more like we're being terrorized by our own government. Their enforcement of these laws and policies has no clearly defined sensibility or probable cause within the confines of the law. They are not employing reason or fully analyzing and considering context, circumstances, or the benefit, cost, and harm of the things in relation to society, which is essentially the entire purpose of all of the laws that we have. Justin Carter is not the first that this sort of thing has happened to, and he certainly will not be the last. It is not just about being able to say anything and expecting that our government will be reasonable and sensible enough to know whether you're serious or not, because they won't be. We know that now. This is about overreach, ruining lives, mental and physical health, individuals arresting people senselessly, imprisoning people, taking away their absolute freedom in a way that is entirely unwarranted and unsupported based on the evidence in relation to the claims against them. This is about relinquishing our liberties to the state for vaguely defined safety, false security, poorly enforced laws, and an utterly incompetent and reckless agenda to end something through a war on terror that has never truly been properly defined for us. It's not certain what the immediate and practical solution for this rising problem is because in some respects we may have already reached the point of no return. But I can tell you it's not. Fear of suffering the same consequences that Justin did for saying something similar. Once you become too frightened of the state to engage in your supposedly clearly defined freedoms, you're no longer even free to the extent that the laws permit. And they have and will continue to remove your so-called liberties until you no longer even have the control to fight back against them. They're acting in a way that is thoughtless, dangerous, intimidating, and even autocratic. But being silent because you fear being penalized or being silent when they do this to someone else, like they did to Justin Carter, is not the solution. We deserve more than this. We deserve more freedom than this. We deserve more autonomy than this. We deserve a more competent, sensible, reasonable, and fair government. And we deserve more competent, sensible, reasonable, and fair enforcement of the law, which does not ignore probable cause or lack thereof, evidence or lack thereof, or context and circumstances when evaluating what is or is not justified. There is no denying that Krista, the future Fuhrer, looks really shady here. She kind of reminds me of Alex Jones with all of her anti-government conspiracy paranoia. Whenever I think of Alex Jones, I think of right-wing kooks. And whenever I think of right-wing kooks, I think of this guy, Adolf Hitler. So you know what to do, fellow MHRAs. Now is the time to get your butterfly nets and snatch this butterfly up before the future happens.